June 2025. In the shadow of Naples, fishermen hear a hiss, then see the bay boiling in ways not witnessed for centuries, echoing the same eerie signs that preceded the last eruption in 1538. But this time, something far stranger is unfolding below. Seafloor fractures are appearing where models said they could not. Volcanic gases are pouring out in unprecedented amounts, and the rules scientists trusted have gone silent. What no one can yet answer is how far this unraveling will go, or how soon three million lives may be changed forever. It all starts with a single eyewitness and a question no one knows how to answer next. A fisherman from Pozzuoli stands at the edge of his small boat, phone shaking in his hand. The bay, usually calm at sunrise, is alive with a dense field of bubbles, so many that the water hisses and churns like a cauldron. The timestamp on his clip reads 5.41 a.m. He mutters a prayer, voice barely above the noise, and pans his camera across the scene. The bubbling stretches for hundreds of meters, forming a ragged belt just offshore. Steam rides the morning air, carrying a sharp, sulfurous smell that stings the throat. Within minutes, other boats drift closer, drawn by the commotion. One by one, fishermen turn away. They haul in nets, half-finished, start, start their engines, and steer for safer waters. Some shout warnings, non a normal, while others just stare, silent, as the field expands. Word spreads fast through Pozzuoli's harbor. Older men recall stories from their fathers about the sea boiling before the earth opened in 1538, but no one remembers anything like this. Local bars fill with talk of the bubbles, of fish fleeing to deeper water, of nets coming up empty. Videos circulate on group chats and social media, sparking a flurry of calls to the Port Authority and City Hall. By noon, civil protection officials arrive at the docks, joined by a pair of scientists from the Osservatorio Vesuviano. They ask to see the fisherman's phone, replaying the footage frame by frame. The scientists measure the width of the bubbling zone, jot down coordinates and question witnesses about the timing and smell. One official, notebook in hand, listens to a fisherman describe the sound, like the sea was breathing, but too fast. The anomaly is impossible to ignore. The bubbling is not confined to a single vent or patch. It pulses along a broken line, as if something beneath the bay is forcing its way upward through cracks in the seafloor. The density of the bubbles makes fishing impossible. Some boats stay away for days, worried about what might be rising from below. The clip is forwarded to regional authorities and volcanologists in Naples, who compare it to satellite images and recent seismic logs. The questions multiply, is this just another phase of the caldera's long unrest, or a sign that the ground beneath the bay is failing in a new way? For the fishermen, there is no answer. Only the memory of a morning when the sea itself seemed to change and the uneasy sense that something old and powerful is stirring just out of sight. In the autumn of 1538, the shoreline west of Naples began to change in ways that confounded the people living along its edge. Days before the eruption, the land near Pozzuoli rose so quickly that locals watched as the sea retreated, exposing stretches of muddy ground where boats had once floated. Fishermen reported the water turning restless, bubbles rising in thick, hissing clusters, the surface roiling as if something enormous was stirring beneath. Chroniclers describe the bay as boiling, the air heavy with the stink of sulfur. Nets came up tangled with dead fish, or nothing at all. The usual rhythms of the coast were broken by a sense that the sea itself was sick. Then, on the night of September 29th, a deep tremor shook the region. Within hours, a fissure split open near the village of Tripergoli. What followed was a week of relentless violence. Ash and steam blasted skyward. Red-hot cinders and stones rained down, forcing people to flee inland. The eruption built a new cone, Monte Nuovo, rising 130 meters above the plain in just a few days. 
The coastline shifted as land pushed upward, swallowing orchards and fields, reshaping the boundary between earth and sea. By the time the eruption ended, the landscape had been transformed. The village of Tripergole was buried, and the outlines of the bay had changed forever. Eyewitness accounts from that week survive in letters and diaries. They speak of a world turned upside down, unending earthquakes, the ground splitting open, the sea retreating and returning, smoke and fire pouring from the earth. For those who lived through it, the signs had been impossible to ignore. The boiling water, the sudden silence of birds, the sickly taste in the air, each detail now reads as a warning written in nature's own hand. Centuries later, the story of Monte Nuovo remains more than a memory. It stands as a reminder that Campi Flegre's quiet periods are always temporary. The same forces that shaped the bay in 1538, rising ground, surging gas, cracks opening beneath the sea, are written into the landscape and the collective memory of the region. The past offers not just a record of disaster, but a template for reading the subtle, uneasy signals that sometimes come before the earth moves again. A research vessel from the National Institute of Geophysics and Volcanology idles just beyond the Pozzuoli Harbor, its deck crowded with sensor arrays and a small team of geophysicists. Dr. Lucia Ferrante, a senior marine geophysicist, scans the latest multi-beam bathymetric readouts as the ship's sonar sweeps the seafloor. The data reveal something that, until recently, was only suspected. A broken chain of vents and subtle fractures tracing a wide arc beneath the Gulf of Pozzuoli. The pattern is not random. It mirrors the ring-shaped fault system that defines the inner edge of Campi Flegre's caldera, an ancient scar now reawakened by the restless pressure below. Over the past year, Ferrante's team has mapped dozens of gas vents aligned along this offshore ring, some clustered in tight groups, others stretching in loose chains for hundreds of meters. Remotely operated vehicles, equipped with high-resolution cameras, descend to the seabed to capture close-up images. They reveal cracks wide enough for superheated gas to escape in continuous streams, forming shimmering plumes that rise through the water column. The vehicle's sensors register elevated temperatures and spikes in dissolved carbon dioxide, confirming that these are not ordinary seeps. Some vents pulse in rhythm with distant earthquakes, as if the crust itself is breathing. The 2023 and 2024 survey campaigns have pieced together a new map of the caldera's hidden offshore extension. The main fracture belt trends north-northwest, running parallel to the coastline and connecting with known onshore faults near Solfatara and Pisciarelli. In some sectors, vent chains run for nearly a kilometer, with individual fissures linking into broader networks. The geometry matches seismic models from recent years, which show earthquake clusters and slow fault slip tracing the same arc beneath the bay. The alignment of these features, onshore and offshore, confirms that the mechanical unrest driving ground uplift in Pozzuoli is also deforming the seafloor, creating new pathways for gas and fluids to escape. Ferrante's team notes that the most active vent fields coincide with areas of greatest Brady seismic uplift and shallow seismicity. In these zones, the seafloor is marked by fresh pockmarks, mud domes, and linear fractures. Some of the cracks appear to have widened in recent months, as indicated by repeat ROV passes and sonar profiles. The vent mouths themselves are rimmed with mineral deposits and bacterial mats, evidence of sustained hydrothermal flow. In water samples taken above the most vigorous vents, chemical analysis shows elevated levels of magmatic gases, clear fingerprints of deep processes at work. This offshore fracture system is not just a curiosity. It represents a direct extension of the caldera's internal architecture, a network of weaknesses that could channel pressure and fluids between land and sea. 
For the first time, scientists can trace the hidden connections that link the restless ground beneath Pozzuoli to the shifting seafloor of the bay. Every new vent, every fresh fissure, is a sign that the caldera's unrest is not confined to the land. The evidence now points to a system whose boundaries and whose hazards reach farther than anyone previously documented. The next challenge is to correlate these offshore changes with the signals being recorded onshore and to understand what they might mean for the evolving risk to the densely populated coast. Across the Campi Flagre caldera, a dense grid of instruments tracks every tremor, every tilt in the ground. The National Institute of Geophysics and Volcanology maintains this network. GPS receivers, INSAR satellites, seismic arrays, gas analyzers, feeding a constant stream of data into Naples and Rome. Since 2005, the ground beneath Pozzuoli has lifted by 1.4 meters. Each year brings several more centimeters of rise, but in recent months, the rate has quickened. Some coastal sectors have shifted upward by as much as four centimeters in a matter of weeks, a pace that outstrips the slow crawl of past decades. The pressure is not only vertical. Earthquake swarms, once sporadic, have become a daily occurrence. In June 2025, a magnitude 4.6 quake rattled the city, the strongest ever recorded in the area. That month alone, more than 2,500 earthquakes registered beneath the caldera, most too small to feel but enough to crack walls and unsettle nerves. The epicenters cluster at shallow depths, less than two kilometers down, mirroring the arc of the caldera's hidden faults. Automated catalogs now log tens of thousands of microquakes each year mapping a restless system where fractures propagate and slip in response to mounting stress. Gas monitoring adds another layer to the picture. At Solfatara and Pichiarelli, fumaroles size Iwushumeli. Fumaroles vent superheated steam laced with carbon dioxide and traces of helium-3. Since the mid-2000s, helium isotope ratios have edged higher, reaching values nearly three times that of the atmosphere a subtle but persistent sign that deep magmatic gases are feeding the system. These changes are gradual, unfolding over years rather than days, but they reinforce the sense that the shallow hydrothermal reservoir is not isolated from the magma below. Rising carbon dioxide fluxes, measured in hundreds of tons per day, track closely with periods of rapid uplift and seismicity. Beneath the surface, the caldera's caprock is showing signs of fatigue. Laboratory experiments on rock samples from the field reveal a worrying pattern. Repeated cycles of stress and micro-fracturing reduce the rock's tensile strength by up to 40%. Each new episode of Bradyseaism, each pulse of gas and fluid, chips away at the crust's ability to contain the pressure building below. The analogy is simple a paperclip bent back and forth until it snaps. In the caldera, the overlying block has been loaded and unloaded so many times that its mechanical limit may be within reach. For the scientists at the National Institute of Geophysics and Volcanology, these converging signals, accelerating uplift, shallow seismic swarms, magmatic gas fingerprints, and laboratory evidence of weakening rock present a system under cumulative strain. The monitoring network captures a landscape in slow transformation, where the boundaries between land and sea, between stability and failure, are growing thinner with each passing week. The question is no longer whether the crust is being pushed to its limits, but how and when those limits will be breached. Inside the INGV Monitoring Center, Dr. Matteo Russo, a senior modeler, stares at a wall of screens alive with seismic traces and deformation plots. For years, predictive models have guided hazard planning at Campi Flegre, mapping out the likely paths from unrest to eruption. But the current data refuses to fit. Russo's latest simulations branch out in directions that even in seasoned colleagues find unsettling. Instead of a single pathway, 
the system now forks into four distinct possibilities, each carrying its own risks and uncertainties. The first scenario is a continuation of what is already happening, prolonged unrest with ground rising and falling, swarms of earthquakes, and no eruption, at least for now. The second scenario involves a sudden hydrothermal explosion, where superheated water flashes to steam, tearing through weakened rock and sending ash and debris skyward. The third possibility is a submarine eruption beneath the Gulf of Pozzuoli, where magma or hot fluids breach the seafloor, mixing with seawater to produce explosive jets and the threat of local tsunamis. The final and most feared scenario is a full-scale magmatic eruption, with fresh magma breaking through the crust, generating pyroclastic flows and ashfall that could sweep across Naples and the densely populated coast. Russo's models once ranked these outcomes by probability, but recent offshore fractures and vent alignments have thrown the odds into question. The boundaries between scenarios are blurring, and the data no longer points to a single dominant threat. Instead, the system appears capable of shifting rapidly from one mode to another, making it impossible to rule out any of the four. For scientists and emergency planners, this expanding tree of possibilities demands a new kind of vigilance, one that accepts uncertainty as part of the risk and forces preparations for outcomes that, until now, seemed remote. More than 3 million people live within reach of campy flagreis hazards, their homes and daily routines mapped across one of the most densely populated volcanic regions on Earth. The city of Naples, sprawling suburbs, and the narrow coastal roads around Pozzuoli all sit inside overlapping risk zones, where evacuation routes are limited and escape can bottleneck in minutes. In the early 1980s, about 40,000 residents of Pozzuoli were ordered to leave as the ground rose, and earthquakes cracked buildings. Many families never returned. The historic Rioni Terra district was left empty for years. Today, the scale of exposure is far greater. Civil protection officials quietly test mass warning systems, update evacuation maps, and coordinate with local mayors, but the logistics remain daunting. The red zone, where pyroclastic flows could sweep through in minutes, covers entire neighborhoods and schools. Emergency planners rehearse traffic control and assembly points, knowing that even a moderate eruption or a hydrothermal blast could force tens of thousands to move on short notice. The presence of Vesuvius just to the east adds another layer of uncertainty. Some scientists study whether pressure changes beneath Campi Flegre could influence Vesuvius's magma chamber through deep underground pathways, raising the specter of cascading hazards. For the officer overseeing readiness drills, the challenge is not just technical, it is personal. Each new scenario forces a reckoning with unanswered questions. How to move a city, how to warn without panic, and how to plan for risks that science cannot yet quantify. The stakes are measured not only in models and probabilities, but in the faces of people who have lived with the volcano's shadow for generations. Today, the ground beneath Naples shifts with no clear pattern, and science admits its limits. As one of the world's most densely populated volcanic zones, Campi Flegre's uncertainty is now everyone's problem. Preparedness, not prediction, is what stands between disaster and survival. Nature is not following our models. The question is, are we ready to act when it matters most? Let me know your thoughts below.